100%. This is a Candid Candice exclusive. Hey everybody, my name is Candace and you are watching the Candid Candace Show. If you're new to my channel, please make sure you subscribe. Okay, so let's get right into it, you guys. I have an exclusive interview to share with you guys that I conducted with the phenomenal actor Terrence Howard. I was recently contacted by Terrence Howard's team and you guys, it is truly my honor and my pleasure to have him on the show. Terrence and I had a very candid conversation discussing a lot of the things that he has going on in his life, specifically his scientific and humanitarian plans. Some of these plans he did discuss on the red carpet at the 2019 Emmys, but the people who interviewed him, they pretty much made a mockery of him, laughing at him about his ideas, pretty much making him look crazy. Well, I personally do not think that Terrence Howard Howard is crazy and I'm very happy to have him on the show and allow you all to really listen to him. When people are talking about things that you don't understand, you shouldn't laugh at them. You should listen to them and then ask them questions and that's exactly what I did. And you guys, Terrence Howard is a very, very smart man. This book that he has and his new geometry that he's teaching and the technology that he is discovering, you guys, it's phenomenal. But I don't want to say any more. I just want you guys to watch the interview and allow Terrence Howard to speak for himself and show that he is not crazy. He's creative. Enjoy the show. This is a Candid Candace exclusive. See, but you you said thank you to me, but I wanted to say thank you to you. I, I really want to thank you just for being a part of my show because, I mean, I was honored. I'm like, you want to be on my show? I just tell my opinion and, you know, converse with my viewers. So for you to want to be a part of it, I'm just, I'm just grateful. So I want to say thanks. <laughs> no, you should, you know, anytime somebody speaks out the way you did, um, they should be applauded for it. And since you raised the question or was defending the, the sanity within this argument that I have, mm -hmm. since you were holding a lot of holding a lot of that court then i'm like let's utilize the platform and and discuss and talk about it, it. okay mm -hmm. so you All just right. you go ahead this is under your this is under your tutelage now okay i mean so let's let's just jump right into the statements that you made on that red carpet that was the emmys right so yes okay so i'm not going to read everything you said just the the specific points that I wanted to. So you said I made some discoveries in my own personal life with the science that Pythagoras were searching for. I was able to open up the flower of life properly and find the real wave conjugations that we've been looking for for 10,000 years. And then you went forward to say that, you know, your plans, which is that you're going to prove that gravity is an effect and not a force. And you will build the planet Saturn without gravity and build the Milky Way galaxy without gravity. Now, like you saw from my video, the people who interviewed you, they laughed. I mean, a oh lot of other, God, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they laughed. I mean, and, and like you saw from my video, I, I was offended for you without even knowing what you were talking about. It was just pure disrespect as if your thoughts weren't valid. I've made some discoveries in my own personal life with the science that, you know, Pythagoras was searching for. I was able to open up the flower of life properly and find the real wave conjugations that we've been looking for for 10,000 years. Uh, we're I didn't, I didn't do up, too well in trigonometry. Uh, what is the Platonic solids? <laughs> wow. But wait, going on. Uh, you thought that was it. It isn't. There's more. Yeah. I'm going to be able to prove that gravity is only an effect and not a force. I'm putting something on YouTube really? where I will build the planet Saturn without gravity and build the Milky Way galaxy wow. without gravity. Right. Aren't you getting a star? He's rebuilding universe. <laughs> you go, well, you're getting a star. Yes, so again, I think that will be an even uh, more widely attended and cover. Know. Uh, he gets a star Tuesday on the Hollywood Walk. Yeah. We got to be there. We really. But he's yeah. rebuilding Saturn. Right. Yeah. At that <laughs> Without last yes. gravity. And no that platonic last. solids. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to go viral. Right. This right. Is, See, this that, is that, not that, that actually that is you. Like the whole world is trying to go viral, and you <laughs> don't want to go no, viral. That's yeah. good. Please. Good for you. You're uh, being true to yourself. And so I guess my first mm -hmm. question before you even explain anything about science, how did that make you feel to watch that back and see them make a mockery of? 
you, not what you're saying. They made a mockery of you. Well, the funny thing is, um, as David would attest to, um, when we started this entire process, setting all this emotion, writing the book, um, building the technologies, you know, we had we understood that it would come in certain phases, and that okay. someone would have to put their head out for a minute, and it would look like it's about to be ran over by a semi, and then mm -hmm. backed up over it again, and. We knew ahead of time that it was it wasn't going to be met with roses and you know and well wishes. Right. So that's all been part of a of an interesting dance. Mm -hmm. Did it? I could say it hurt, um, but <laughs> what hurt more? What what hurt was while wow, it's going to take a lot sometimes for a generation to recognize how far off mm -hmm. it is from from its salvation but also how far off how close it is to its own reckoning you know by our inner inability to find balance with everything else that's in balance in the universe mm -hmm. you know our tone will be snuffed out so that's i looked at listen to it more so from a sad place but also knowing that that was supposed to occur and would have to occur. Here I'm questioning everything. I said I'm going to, I can take a physics simulation. That's what I basically meant. I'm sharing that on, on Tuesday when I receive my star, I'm going to be able to prove that gravity is only an effect and not a force. I'm putting something on YouTube really? where I will build the planet Saturn without gravity and build the Milky Way galaxy wow. without gravity. I'm going to, I can take a physics simulation, that's what I basically meant. Um, okay. Some of the work that Chris Seeley has done, um, taking a physics simulation the same physics program that they use at MIT, that they use at at at, at Princeton, at um, at at CERN, you know, mm -hmm. the same. It's, it's a very high tech um, program, and we were able. He was able to build the planet Saturn, or all of the effects of the planet Saturn, mm -hmm. by just using a number of vortices and showing them in relation to each other, and it also. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen the video. I did. I did. A few times. <laughs> I had to watch it a few times to completely understand. And um, uh, using the example of uh, tornadoes being vortices. Like, mm -hmm. for, for me, I needed that. I needed whirlpool. Raymond's turns. A whirlpool. <laughs> was it a whirlpool? I thought it was a tornado. A, a tornado is a whirlpool. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just <laughs> further down, you know? But most of the times we don't get to see whirlpools. You yeah. know, from um, from a, a, a y axis of it, uh, mm -hmm. looking at it standing up vertically, right. you see the whirlpools. You know, going down the the tub when the water's going out. Yeah, you know, but I mean that's a, that that simple word vortices or vortex, like they laugh, like ha ha vortices. But then when you say tornado, they're like, oh, okay, a tornado. So sometimes I just feel like if you're using a word that perhaps we're not using all the time or we don't hear a lot or just a word we don't know that's where the laughs come in but it seems that it's perhaps them being uncomfortable with not knowing that's well, just my opinion no i like the opinion it's let them be uncomfortable for a time i mean yeah. if when people are uncomfortable they listen mm-hmm they listen now i would have i would have thought because um i know i use vortices so many times inside the book too because mm -hmm. i'm always talking about these vortices yeah. but it's it has so much i guess it does tell the same power and story that's within the tornado and yeah. that constant spin but everything in the universe is reduced down to those two things whether something is spinning to the right or spinning to the left Okay. If it's if it's spinning northeasterly, mm -hmm. then what it's becoming is electric because it's okay. seeking a higher pressure condition. Okay. Um, picture a rock, you know, falling a, a, a million ton rock 
falling into the into the into a crevice, a hole in the bottom of the ocean, and how that rock would move with urgency towards the center of the earth. Well, that's what electricity is doing. It's moving, seeking a higher pressure condition. The deeper that rock goes, the greater the surrounding pressure, and that increases the electrical conductivity because things are closer to each other. When okay. things are further away, you know, you can get a spark across, but it's a lot different when they're touching each other like this. And especially if you can get them to overlap each other. Look at how much more conductivity you have mm -hmm. taking place. And that's what electricity is doing, spinning northeast. And whereas magnetism, mm -hmm. so that they both can fit together, magnetism says, since you're going to spin northeast and seek a higher pressure condition, what I'm going to do, since we're equal and opposite mates, I'm going to spin southwest. And as a result of spinning southwest, it's become centrifugal, where you have one that's centripetal, seeking a higher pressure zone, and the other one is centrifugal, expanding outwardly, radiating, magnifying, rarefying that which was once this tightly held together. And that's okay. the dance between all things in existence. It's at some balance between its electric contraction mm -hmm. and its magnetic dispersion. Okay, so since you're talking about, you know, mag magnetic, so what does the idea that we've all been taught opposites attract, would that be accurate then? Because that seems different. Well, let's look at it. Um, you show me two opposites. Let's look at air. Um, or hot water, cold water. If you have mm -hmm. cold water coming down and you mm -hmm. have hot water coming up, what happens to them? Do they just mix together happily or <laughs> do they do everything they can to avoid each other? Opposites don't attract in nature. Opposites repel each other. That's what nature does. It's the positive things. It's two people that are alike. It's their positive electric charge that brings them together. Like, wow, you're like me, I'm like you. Ooh, look at how we get along. Yeah. It's, when they, it's when they become opposites yeah. that their relationship, you know, we no longer yeah. see the same way. So I believe that we have been force-fed um, deliberately a misunderstanding and misconception of how nature views the very words we use. What What is the reason for misinforming us? Well, the same way you give a child a certain amount of control while they're growing, you know, we'll tell them how to open up the door in case of an emergency, mm -hmm. but we don't tell them where all the keys are, mm -hmm. you know, because he might abuse those things because he doesn't know that if he opens up a particular door, there may be something dangerous behind it. So I think that humanity has been given a certain amount of, of leash so that we can have some run in the in the in the in the, in the yard. But that leash ha is attached to um, a chain, and that chain is has been ingrained inside of us to where we don't even question. No one questioned how. The platonic solids. I wish we could pull up that um, to, uh, so we can get past the conversation because right now it's still in this debatable place. Well, could it be right, right or could it be wrong? Let's let's get to let's get to some some real some well, real can we stuff. Start, that, can we start with the flower of life? Because I know that's yes, one of the I main, love that. I would love to start with that because I mean I've already done my own research, but just for you to tell me because I mean that was one of the main you know, things that you said, you said you were able to open up the flower of life properly. Yeah, so let's like, walk through that. And the good thing about the flower of life is, remember the flower of life is, has always, it's one of the oldest symbols known to humanity and on every continent that it, that it occurs. And it occurs on every single continent. It's always called the flower of life, even in that language. So, the platonic okay. solids are descendants from this flower of life. It's them attempting to open it. 
Now, one of the things that I noticed with nature, and Walter Russell spoke about constantly, was all energy in the universe is expressed in motion, all motion in waves, and all waves are curved. So where did the straight lines come from to make the platonic solids, the tetrahedron? Okay. Those, they just made straight lines where through curved spaces where the circles were intersecting. But it makes sense. This made sense to um, someone thinking that the world was flat. Here okay. again, no straight lines, but that they draw straight lines through. Okay. You see that you you see what I'm saying? Now, yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah. This is the linear perspective of the universe, the linear perspective. And for the last 6,000 years, all our math and science has been built upon this. And therefore, the Pythagorean theorem, all of these things, um, all of the, the field equations that they have to explain the largest thing, even gravity, all of those things were based upon how these things move. So let's go to, DJ, take him to, yeah, that's much better. Now, we decided to approach it from a different perspective. Okay. It was like, let's cut the individual pieces out and put them together according to universal ratio. So as you come down onto this, you'll see what happens when four bubbles meet. Mm -hmm. And this is the space that's left over between them. This is the space where the four bubbles do not touch. This is the negative space that controls them. Does that make any sense to you? Um, a little mm -hmm. bit. I'm seeing it's literally the in-between spaces. It's the in-between spaces. If you were to take literally four balls together, mm -hmm. you know, or picture four balls in your hand, four um, marbles in your hand, and if you squeeze them as hard as you can and get them to where they couldn't move. Okay there would still be a certain amount of space that's left over where they cannot touch. Okay. That's that negative space right there. And this is what happens when four bubbles meet. Okay. Now, remember, they had the square. Now, let's go to where eight bubbles meet. And we can scroll over the top of it. Now, this right here, by all of the literature and by how it behaves, they would normally call this something to do with being the proton or the center, the draw, the center attractor. Go back to the one that had four, um, DJ. Yep. Thank you. This having four, what this shows here is that there are eight poles to the smallest dynamic because each pole has a point on it or it has a concavity to it. The ones with the point is spinning out, it's expanding. Okay. That one is actually spinning its way out. So those become magnetic because they expand their way out. But the ones that are concaved, okay. that, that space right there, that's the job of electricity. It's always tightening things. So we see even from the smallest piece, this is the highest pressure condition, that there are at least eight poles. You have four electric poles mm -hmm. and you have four magnetic poles. There's at least eight poles that's interacting, whereas before we, had taught that we were taught that there was only a north pole and a south pole. Mm -hmm. So now you see how these things could change technology because now we can draw more poles off of it. So now once you go to where you put six of these things together, the green, yep, and, and you watch how now you have eight poles, 16 poles, and another eight poles of interaction of something that they would normally call a photon, how it behaves. Okay. Now, remember the last thing that had six sides to it was a, was a, was a, was a cube. Now, you can imagine the things you can build with a cube. You know, you can make a whole lot of, most of our world is built off of cubes. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what could be built upon these? Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to picture a house being this shape. That's what I'm picturing. Oh, I have to tell this story with it. Now, we'll go to when 12 bubbles meet. 
Now, what's interesting with the flower of life, it's also been called the tree of life. And we all know the story about the tree of life, that mankind, that the Adam and Eve was blocked from getting to the tree of life so that they couldn't eat from its fruit and live to time indefinite. Okay. I'm saying that the tree of life has now been opened again to mankind in these in these wave conjugations that come from the flower of life because these are the true fruits in comparison to the um, dodecahedron that was drawn across now you can go to tw when 24 bubbles meet and each one of these is just a different pressure condition this pressure condition hasn't even been discovered yet this is with how many? this is when 24 bubbles meet Okay. This is the negative space where they contain themselves. This is their constitution. This is um, the, their province, the laws that cover whatever that small municipality is, you know. No drinking after such and such. <laughs> the bar must close at this hour, you know. But this is a negative space of negative space. And I can show you, you know, some of these things that I have here. And I'm going to let me turn this around. Okay. To give you a better idea. Did you actually that. sculpt that? These are things that were made for me. Um, oh. I had the, yeah, I had to get 3Ds. These are the ones that I built. Oh, wow. Wait, can, can you pick it up? Yeah. I don't know. Can you see it? Um, turn it. I mean, get it a little bit closer. I think you're kind of out of the frame. I'm yep. trying to. I'm, yep. Yep. Okay. There we go. Remember, it's a delay. On this. Oh, yeah. But this is what happens when six bubbles me. A whole new geometry occurs. So and then... The Sorry, so, it's a little bit of delay. I know, I, I gotta go, and I wanna get back to just me again. Yeah. So, everything comes down to two separate sides. There's the magnetic side, okay. where four bubbles meet, which is the first thing that I discovered, which is an all shape. Because I wanted to figure out um, how many numbers, like they said, three was the magic number. Mm-hmm. So how, so what really was it that the, the, the Holy Trinity, a lot of things, good things comes in threes. We hear all these different stories about threes, but there was nothing sustainable about three. It turned out in order to see height, width, and depth as far as perception, you need four dimensions. You need your height, your width, and your depth, but you also need your fourth perspective mm -hmm. that has to be equal and opposite to all the other sides to it. And that pressure condition looks just like hydrogen. Can you turn which, it a little? Okay. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Now this is expanding. This has, if you, if you were to drop this in any kind of fluid, these fins on it would make it fall slower. Even though it has a lot of positive charge in these collective areas, but now imagine it this way, without the fins, and which one do you think will move quicker if it was dropped? The one without? The one without, that would be the one with the greatest electrical potential. It, because it doesn't have these magnetic things that's, that's pushing and expanding off of it. And the entire universe ends up being built as a result of these things. Um, maybe I went too close. Yeah, that's, that's good. These things turning into now these. Now it'll be a lot better if I allow DJ to show you these things on um, how they really, how through, through the computer, because trying to translate it from here. It's a little different, but I wanted you to understand, um, no, these things, these, this is real geometry. You know, these have been built by me. This is when six of them come together and make a natural turbine. 
So there's an entirely new geometry or technology that could be opened up as a result of seeing things from a slightly different perspective. So, so what kind of things, like if, do you have any like specific things? I mean, I know you mentioned, um, you know, Saturn, but just worldly things. Like I mentioned a house, like I don't you know, know why, like, that was the first thing that popped in my mind was what if there was a house that was shaped that way? Well, let's, <laughs> let, let's, instead of the jumping directly to a house, let's go to the, what would power a house? Um, okay. TJ, uh, Chris, will you, will you do, um, our plans for Haiti? what we were thinking about doing for the deforested oh, area can, inside of Haiti. Yeah, please bring that out. Yeah. Okay. Because I know a lot of the questions that people have, like, okay, you know, Terrence has all of these ideas, but what are you doing with them? The one that you mentioned mm -hmm. so far was Saturn. So I was just... Yeah, well, we're about, let's, let's, let's show you something. Yeah, okay. go to the, straight to the video. Just go straight to the video. This is Haiti. This is giving you a... Oh, no, not to walk. Let's walk through it. Let's yeah. walk through it. I'm sorry. Okay. There's there is a delay here. There is a delay. Okay. So this is Haiti. Okay. Can you imagine the amount of trash that's left from? This is all as a result of what took place um, at that terrible earthquake. Mm. They have not recovered. This is Haiti today. Let's mm. let's go to the next picture. Now, what we envision is being able to take well. Oh, you went yep. so quick. Sorry, you sorry, went, sorry, sorry. I did. Sorry, delay. I apologize. It is a long delay. It is a long delay. You know, so here we have the the potential piece that Haiti could have, but to the to the right of well, to my right is a book that describes a tall store, uh, a tall history of sugar, a tale of history. Go to the next page. Yep. Let's see how long it takes to hear that. So this slow. is the desperation that the people are living in. So now these are the hurricanes that, that chase this island. Now as a result of the Haitians being one of the very first islands to turn on their masters and so they immediately was left out of any economic growth deliberately. Mm. Um, the Dominican Republic, you know, which sits to, you know, the green area, the Haitians have uh, deforested all of their land. They have, to, they have to, in order to find, to build a house, in order to, to find food, to, they've deforested most of their land, so they have no natural resources left that they can grab from. But this is what we hope to do now. Since all of that area is free for the sun, now this was what could be um, let's go back to Jay. Okay. Yeah, that picture there. You got it. Oh, wow. Yeah, this could, this is, this is what's taking place in, in the, the Dominican. And this is what Haiti looks like. So the economic potential yeah. for Haiti. Now let's go to the next one, DJ. So with um, utilizing the technology that, that, we've um, I've uncovered um, instead of having a solar panel that works as a solar panel it's just flattened instead of having a wind something working on wind instead of having something working on piezoelectric or or um, vibratory harmonics this is what we will build which will power more than three homes oh my gosh Wow. Just let it play. That's a light unit, but all of the focal light, focus light, the energy is all being pushed to a center area that's going to also be affected by the multiple vortices that this thing, as I talked about earlier, and each change in pressure creates some, another kick in energy, and imagine this. Now let's go to the fields. And that's pulling, the, I'm sorry, it's pulling the energy from the sun, from the sunlight? That's doing, it's filling solar, it's doing wind, it's doing piezoelectric. Piezoelectric is when you take like a quartz crystal. You wonder why the pyramids were made of, of um, 
of a quartz like material, granite. It's because mm -hmm. quartz, when you push on it, when you put pressure on quartz, it returns that force back in an electrical charge. Mm -hmm. So you use piezoelectric just by having anything that changes the pressure on a quartz, you will get an, another electrical charge off of it. And then you also are able to get vibratory charges from its particular positioning. So play the video of having fields of, of the um, light units. This is um, on a building. But within a few years, Haiti would probably um, provide most of the electricity that is used in the Dominican Republic. Wow. And imagine the trade between them, technicians learning how to take these things to build these there. And these are these are also will ultimately power um, something that could actually change the 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 world itself yeah but these are little steps these are little steps that's a big step i wouldn't call that little that's 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 not little <laughs> well we can put that in we'll put that in, in individual backyards on rooftops and wow. everyone can have their energy for free well terrence i know why they're laughing at you they don't want this done of course not of course <laughs> not but continue. Wow. I think we have more with it. Um, no, we don't. We can't do this one yet. This one is okay. Ultimately, yeah. ultimately, we can. The air can become purified. It can take the energy from. We can. Um, wow. This is an energy amplifier in its own right, and it's all based upon, you know, these simple standing waves. Mm-hmm. Just standing waves. Wow. And how the universe behaves, you know, how it loves the standing wave and how it expresses itself. And no matter what, it's going to keep coming down to this one little piece right here. Now, mm -hmm. can we take her to, um, since this is the all shape, mm -hmm. and if I was to take um, eight of these and put them together, they would look like this. And then I would stack them, and they would look like this. I don't know if you can see that. Can you take her to that, yeah. DJ? When the light column, and this is something that I built years ago. Um, wow, Terrence, this is amazing. This is fun. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, the light column. Uh, thank you. I'm just blown away. Wow. Um, I get it here. Yeah. Is it there? Yeah. So this is what's in my house. What I just showed you. Yeah. What I just showed you, this is a real thing. This is what happens when... Um, um, you, when eight, eight all shapes come together and they stack upon each other, they begin predicting the entire wave field. Now, all of that potential, the purpose of that is all of that potential can be tapped now. Okay. Every place where you see a light going off, that's a, that's a vortice. There's a small tornado happening there. So you can tap onto that energy for free. That's what wow. this is. This predicts all distribution of matter. So now let's take her to the um, at, to, to the piece that you know DJ's work, DJ and Chris's work. Um, yeah, let's go to the actual. Uh, um, this. The one that I wanted coming out of the ground. You know what you want to yeah. I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. But that also, not, yeah, there it is. So that is this right here. Okay. This is it in, um. Well, the model. And then, yeah, this is it if we put it in, um, in virtual. And is it's spinning. CGI? 
it's that right there is CGI. What I showed you before was something built. Yeah. It's interactive. Hands, but this is this is interactive. This is gives you yeah. can you do it from the top a uh, top perspective? Yeah. Oh. So now you see why it's called the fruit from the flower. Because that's wow. all you see is the flower. And that's so if those were used as um, lenses, can you imagine how much they would heat up um, and take one solar lens? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's just not even fair anymore. Wow. So um, this right mom. here, now let's take her and show her the combination of that with predicting the DNA. Okay. Predicting now, the DNA. What you, yeah, the DNA of our bodies, the way our bodies are put together. Um, there we go. Yeah, it's made up, before you start it, it's made up of five, five tones. Okay. Five tones. Um, uh, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. Now, each one of these things are aligned next to another one as a way of passing on a tone, like keys or like keys on the piano. And when you watch them build themselves, you can let it play now. They naturally build themselves around this structure you were just looking at. Okay. This is the hydrogen, the nitrogen, the carbon, the phosphorus, and the oxygen bonding and communicating across our DNA following these same shapes, which happens to just fit inside of the rift, you know, that makes up our entire, that our entire galaxy, the wall of our galaxy, that great rift. Everything is some smaller creature of some much larger being. In our entire galaxy, it's just the DNA, just one DNA strand of much of a much larger being. So, for us to even be having this conversation within the lifespan of of something like that, it's is remarkable. But to talk about truth, to participate in. in and a new paradigm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you wow. for. But this is real. Now, this we did with animation in building Saturn. There was no animation there. That was just what occurred. That's the what I was going to ask. Did you do that intentionally, or no? I, Chris, tell her how it happened. I called you and was like, throw some, throw some of these things into into different positions and see what they create. I didn't, I thought he would come back to me, a, you know, a month from then, you know, and show me something simple. I had no idea three hours later he was going to have that video. And it looked like Saturn. I, I just was like, wait a minute. That's why I had to talk to Mir. I was like, Mir, you need to hear this. You know, <laughs> you, you got to hear what they're... Yeah, it was, oh, it, was quite, it, was, it was quite profound. Like I was, I was simply following the geometry the way Terence was was teaching me the same way he was walking you through it. Right, he well, he walked me through it for you know, a couple of months, you know, banging into my head, and, and but I, so I just ended up lining up the the vortexes, right? The tornado was following, you know, what what Terence refers to as the the linchpin configuration, which is just you know four pointed towards a center common center point. And then, and then doubled it, and then I rotated it 120 degrees, and and uh, follow up. Just let the let the geometry lead the way, right? Yeah. And then I realized that I I put in like some uh, particle systems and stuff, and then I just hit play. Essentially, I just put it, put the angle the angle them following the right angles that of turns wow. of the and then I hit play, and then it just morphed right in front of my eyes. And I was like, I I don't believe what I'm seeing. Right. Even the hexagon on the top of Saturn was... Yeah, that's the stuff that blew my mind. That blew so my literally, yeah. literally uh, this had all occurred three days before the Emmys. So, oh, so that's why you were, I so, was you were so excited. I was so freaking excited. I was like, <laughs> and, then, and then he did it with, with just two linchpins and the Milky Way galaxy. And I was like, okay. 
all right, well, this this is now becoming really fun. So we should show them a linchpin now. Yeah, and, and can you explain they, to me yes. what it is? Because I, when I watched the video, I mean, me and my husband, like, we were fascinated, but, like, confused at the same time. Right. And, and I know li linchpin is a term. That's your term. That's your actual term that you came up with, linchpin. Yeah, I call it a linchpin because it's the it's the constitution that holds everything together. But you see this all shape I have right here. Yes. Well, it is the backbone of the linchpin. Go to the the single linchpin one that we have on the book. Oh, it'll yeah. be easier if you go to that. The one yeah. that's in the book. You just pass the all shape. Um, and, and the book, the book being interactive is certainly helpful. Really. Yeah, yeah, that's the fun part. All of this stuff, we're about to take you through an interactive walkthrough here. So here's the linchpins yeah, there. But go, so. yeah, but go up to where we're um, to. Yeah, this is this is the fun part. Yeah, uh, Gi Giordano Bruno, by the way. Bruno is right there. That's who we were making reference to earlier. But um, I'm sure you'll be able to clip this all together. Back to the flower of life. There we go. Yeah. There you go. See, there's a the linchpin right there to my left. Okay. Now, Got it. what you're looking at is the basically the bone structure. That's the very, that's the very skeletal structure of that overall of the all shape it's the same structure but this is the scaffolding of it so now we see how how the all shapes you know behave in nature and um I, i'm using the wrong term uh, the all shapes are they really express every aspect of the universe as a whole when you're describing magnetic fields and where okay. the the unshapes, I call them, the electric parts describe the electric field. And these two together end up creating, telling the entire story. So, but the center of each one of these all shapes, like it's eight that made up this one, is the linchpin. So show her the linchpin now while I'm holding this one this way. And you can see the three points on it, but then just go to the linchpin in motion right there. Which one? Can you put the cursor on which one you mean? Yeah, this one right here. That's the linchpin right there. Because I have it pulled up here on my tablet too. Yeah, pull it up. Now you'll see here four of the linchpins coming together. Isn't that a daisy? Isn't that a crystal? And what's interesting is four of these coming together will bond with another set of fours and will bond and make a much larger structure and they'll keep making a larger structure. But they'll still have that. So now let's show what happens when five of them bond. This is what I'm saying is a common factor of all things in the universe. This is five linchpins coming together, which is basically all shapes. There will be, um, and now one of the things they've always predicted, they've always said, is that a crystal can't be predicted how a crystal shall grow. But this seems to pretty much tell the tale of crystalline formation. And everything that we see and experience is a crystalline formation. But is Just, it random? There is no randomness to it because everything is going to keep coming back to this all shape. That's still the same shape as, come back to this now, DJ. Yep. If you can see me, that's still this, this same it's all still shape. still that same shape. 
Okay. That's the recursive thing that the universe keeps coming back to. As this, they call it, um, what's that favorite term? The, the Y delta, delta Y. And why it's so important. But it's, those are the things that make it all predictable. And as a result of it, there's so much more technology that we can now access that wasn't available before when we thought the world was flat. But I mean, we've been away from that idea for a while, but what, correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're saying is although we've, most people have agreed that the earth is not flat, the ideas that you're saying right now haven't been acknowledged, at least not in, out in the open. I mean, well, it put it put it this way. Um, imagine um, a couple of sailors, you know, riding in one of the um, in a helicopter and saying, you know, I hear I hear the world is round, mm -hmm. or I hear the world. No, that's not the right illustration. I'm trying to picture something in a modern state. You still using it's it's almost as if somebody from our day today was still sitting and using a rotary phone. If you remember the rotary phones from yeah. the fifties, if yeah. somebody today was trying to run their entire business, the entire world, <laughs> on rotary phones, when yeah. this technology is available right here for okay. us to do this, or they were doing telegraphs still when we have this technology available what the the door that that this new understanding opens you know and a, a absolutely frees humanity from from these this two-dimensional grasp that's held us for the last six thousand years if we want it um yeah that was actually going to be my next question you talked about two-dimensional mathematics in a three-dimensional um, world. Yes. Can you explain that a little bit? I think that's, I got lost on that as well. Um, what we just talked about before, when in our math, you remember X and you remember Y, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. you remember Z. <laughs> Sometimes you remember Z. But based on the two dimensional perspective, that they built the world. They built the world, or the math that describes the world, moves forever directly in front of you to, and forever behind, and forever to the right and to the left. Mm -hmm. It's a flat plane. It has no height. It has no width. It's just, it's a flat plane. Now show me one place in nature where only two dimensions exist. Again, in order for us to see anything, it has to have at least three recognizable dimensions. It has to have height, width, and depth. Okay. And, and our own perspective, which brings it to four. So how in the world can two-dimensional uh, perspectives tell of multi-dimensional reactions and realities? It's like trying to draw me with stick figures. Yeah, you can get some depiction of me, but is it going to be um, the best understanding of drawing my face you know, with, with stick figures? And now we have, we, have, we have so many more tools in which to understand and describe nature and grow as a, as a people, as a as a part of this universe, I think we're being shared, this knowledge is being shared because maybe this is a ripe time in which people are open to something new. Yeah. Something transformational. So let me ask you this. I mean, we've already acknowledged that, you know, some people are laughing or, <clears throat> I mean, especially after hearing what you're going to do in Haiti, there's a lot of... That's what we hope to do. That's what you hope hope to do, but I mean, just those ideas alone, I can imagine, you know, corporate, you know, businesses and power companies—they're not going to want that. 
Now, of course they don't <laughs> want it, but the, otherwise the earth is going, is going to wipe us out if we don't make a change. Yeah. If we don't, if we don't do something quickly, you know, we're, I, I would rather have to take on the full wrath of the corporations and their anger, you know, that's mm -hmm. why we didn't charge anything for the book because the truth is free. And this is more of a shout out, hey, look out, something, something's coming. <laughs> But hey, there's also some help that's coming along the way. Yeah. There's now we, I mean, I'm not a Bible thumper, but I've learned some valuable lessons from, from that book. Um, the idea that the children of Adam stood there for 1,637 years, according to the scriptural chronology, from the time of Adam's creation until the flood came, and uh, that flood um, changing the world, the basis of the world. But it's thought that the children of Adam used to run and hide and look to see past those two angels that with the flaming sword spinning and trying to get glimpses of the tree of life, just glimpses at its fruit. And so many of the great men, the men that we hold in great honor today, like Da Vinci and, and Newton, you know, who had to practice this art of opening the flower of life in the privacy of his home late at night for fear that if it ever got out, you know, this was alchemy. He could, this was heresy, high heresy. And now you guys get to see it. Everybody in the world gets to see that which was held sacred and quiet for so long. There's a reason behind it, especially happening at a time now where people are questioning everything. Oh yeah. I've questioned. I've questioned for the last last ten years. Why has it been that for six thousand years we've worshipped only this male deity, as if a, a man can produce a child and and can produce a son by himself without an equal and opposite female. So what happened to the feminine deity? You know, what, what the equal and opposite since everything in the universe and my studies, what I've come to realize is everything has an equal and opposite made. Even on our periodic table, if you look at carbon being that perfect balance between helium or neon, it has four steps it goes through, three steps it goes through before it gets to that perfect balance. It has a plus one on the, on the helium side, and that's immediately balanced by a minus one on the neon side. And so, he, so um, that minus one is fluorine, and the plus one is lithium. And lithium and fluorine balance each other out. The plus two, the next step up, is beryllium. Well, it's equal and opposite made as a minus two, which is oxygen. If you are in a room and you need to breathe and some beryllium comes in the room, grab as much air as you can because the beryllium is not going to let it go. You will suffocate in the room with beryllium because it wants the oxygen. That's its natural mate. That's its baby. It's taking it. The same way the next step up, a plus three is boron, and it's equal and opposite mate is a minus three, which is nitrogen. Nitrogen and boron, we use boric acid to kill roaches. So we know... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we stay away, but that's our natural, that's the natural balance between nitrogen. And it ends up being perfectly balanced, those two forces squeezing on each other at carbon. And that's why carbon is the same exact color as hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Because hydrogen is just carbon under a higher pressure condition. Then the next pressure condition, the hydrogen becomes carbon, and then it becomes silicon, the same color yellow. And it all has plus one, plus two, and plus threes. What I'm saying, everything like so as above, so below. So if everything within 
this physical universe has an equal and opposite mate, then on a spiritual place, it would have an equal and opposite mate. So now I understand the possibility of why there's so much um, feminine anger taking place now. Look at that deity that's been vilified for 6,000 years. You know, the first plane was placed on the woman. So I think this is a time in which a lot of understanding is going to be revealed. And that's the frightening part. Because, no, this doesn't just question the standards that we've learned our math and science. Mm -hmm. It's over for them. I, this is their foundation. Their foundation was the flower of life flat. Okay. They never thought someone would turn it into three-dimensional and prove them wrong. So that's a wrap on them, regardless. <laughs> Regardless, that's, that's why I've said have, I'm down to debate with anybody, you know, They're, they'll have equations and I'll be like, no, let me show you what it looks like. Yeah, I, I took a look at um, your, your Oxford University um, interview or presentation that you did and mm -hmm. I noticed there was some pushback, you know, during that a little bit, a little bit, but it seems that, you're, seems that you're used to it though. <laughs> It's like I said in the beginning, I, it's not a fair fight. I feel sorry for them. <laughs> well, I mean, because you're so confident I have with the math. Proof. <laughs> no, it's just I'm, I'm confident in following the geometry. It's like the rest of them are walking and they, they, they have to be on the same mountain because we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. But maybe their eyes are closed. Maybe they don't, they, they're not allowing themselves to see the connections. Mm. Or they don't want to see the connections because there's a lot of other things attached to those connections, you know, and to question all of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you mentioned um, spirituality. You can answer this or not, but it does make me wonder what are your spiritual beliefs or religion? Do you subscribe to any religion and you're talking about a lot of science and I know when I did my video everybody typed Scientology he's into Scientology and I just want to know what are your thoughts on that um, what I've come to discover <sighs> everything inside the universe is made from the first thing in the universe okay. from the beginning we normally call the beginning, some call them, call the beginning, the creators. Mm -hmm. We are all collectively, actively participating in this act of creation. I believe that collectively we all make the true God, the true being. All things, not just me, but even the, the plastic, the, the polyethylene that this has turned into, it's still vibrating at the key of E. And that means it's breathing in and it's breathing out. Positively charging, breathing in, negatively discharging, breathing out. Spinning northeast, breathing in, spinning southwest centrifugally, breathing out. It's still alive, and that means where everything is alive. There is no dead. Everything is participating in this thing called creation. We are all sacred. And once we recognize that all things are sacred, then maybe we will vibrate at a slightly higher rate because we'll see the peace of God in ourselves and, and everyone else will see it and, and act accordingly. Because mm -hmm. I did notice in your book, in the um, you mentioned you know the Creator, and we're all one in a sense. And I don't want to misquote. I wish I had it up. You said um, once you know one thing about what did you say? One once thing. You know? If you know one thing about one thing, then you know one thing about, about all everything. things. Yeah. Find the common factors and either multiply or divide. And that's your quote. Yeah. That was very profound. I was like, okay. I know everything, basically. That's what I took from it. You do. You do. If you know, <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> do you, let me tell my husband real quick. Baby, I know everything. Does your yeah, wife and that's another that? thing. <laughs> yeah, when, there's another thing that happens that a lot of us don't realize with women. 
Um, at the point of three months of gestation, when a woman's body recognizes that this is a little girl, mm -hmm. it floods it with estrogen. Now, that womb being flooded with estrogen, it causes the connections between the right and left hemisphere of that little girl's mind to expand. Mm -hmm. a, a child, a little girl, a woman at all times has more connective use of her entire brain than a man at any given time in his life. Because that's what estrogen does. It allows you to see so many different perspectives. And therefore, a woman will learn how to, to go, little girl, learn how to talk faster, learn how to walk, learn how to communicate. But then it also makes you so aware of all the consequences that could happen. And so now you need a, a gang of counselors to talk things through. You got to call Shirley, got to call Pat. Well, no, well, Lisa, no, Kelly said this, all right. Then you'll come up with a solution and then you'll question it again. Just looking for, this is what I've noticed in the women in my life. Mm. But now when the woman's body recognizes it's a little boy and, and floods it with testosterone, it causes this little area inside the brain. I like to call it the locus ceruleus. They say that they haven't drawn the natural connection to it yet, but it's a thing that have these tentacles that's coming out of your limb. Of the, in the brain and mm -hmm. it causes a man to have this myopic view and so if he thinks one thing he's going to run right at it he just see a to z, a to z and it's just a to b and he mm -hmm. has the confidence the testosterone pushes that and pushes that within him you got to remember a man produces a, an average man produces 1500 sperm per heartbeat 1,500 sperm per heartbeat. Each one of them is produced with some amount of testosterone. So that gives him wow. this extra thought of, I've got to push through to, from A to B. So naturally, in a loving, perfect relationship, the woman will think out the possible ways she can sniff out what could work. Like in Cookie and Lucius, you know, mm -hmm. she's able to sniff out what will work, and Lucius has the heart to just execute. Mm. And that's how the balance between the male and female, I, I think, works. That's okay. what nature has shown me. That's what the geometry has shown me. So I'm looking for that within the heavens. Okay, where's the equal and opposite? Mm. You know, where's the mama at? <laughs> and, you know, that was the first time you said, I think, during this conversation. <laughs> You know, I, I do make that mistake sometimes. And no, but no, but you know, that's very interesting because, um, you know, most people have been saying, you know, Terrence Howard's theories or he feels this, he thinks that you've been very confident of saying this is what it is. Well, well one I, can, times I have one the geometry, <laughs> I have the geometry, you know, their math, it doesn't predict the distribution of matter. You yeah. know, what I'm about to do in a couple of months is it's a wrap. In a couple of months, it's it's all predictability will be seen. It will, oh it's gosh. something bigger than walking on water. I'm gonna say that just in common conversation. I want to know what it is. It's too big to know what it is right now. <laughs> but there's everything in stages. Everything has its everything has has yeah. its proper place. But this right here, if they look at the videos, yeah, they'll understand. Anybody that wants to come and take life's waters free. Yeah. They can come and take life's water free. Understand, this is your inheritance, the flower of life. It's the inheritance of mankind, of everything. Yeah. Come and participate. You know, <laughs> all I am is the gardener within the... the and it's, a, it's bounteous, I promise yeah. you. Well, speaking of participate, one of my main questions I did not want to forget to ask you, of all the people laughing and not caring about what you're saying or pretending they don't care, that's what I would say, who's, who's supporting you? Who's helping you? Like, is there any huge scientist or huge, you know, um, public figure or anybody who has your back besides um, me? <laughs> the geometry. <laughs> The geometry, it speak, a picture speaks a thousand words. A picture speaks a thousand words. And yeah. what we're doing with the, the SQ um, energy amplifier, that's, I don't need any more conversation. I don't need to explain anything. Or, I don't need anybody on my side when the truth is on your side. <laughs> 
No, I mean with your plans. Like, I mean, it's oh. going to take money and plans to do all of this or actual other scientists to really help. Because scientists are acting like they don't understand what you mean, but I'm pretty sure a lot of them do. We so don't you don't, you don't really... No? We don't no? We got it all covered. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> all those bases have been covered. This so, is the implementation. So you say you don't need anyone's help, but if they want to, would you be willing to to open up to any type of help, whether it's financial or anything? Or do you feel I'm, like I'm you, you want to do this on your own? You no, know, I'm willing to open up and to share the, the truth that's been shared with me. Okay. I'm willing to, you know, what, what someone does with the fruit from the flowers, what they do with it. Right. Everyone else is responsible. For how they behave with it, you know. But I'm just a gatekeeper. Now everyone's welcome to come and take life's water free. I like that. And I think that's the best part of it. I mean, as soon as I saw that your book was not for sale, I knew. I think that's really what got me. I'm like, okay, yeah. Because I mean, a lot of people say they have something to say, but then they're, you know, selling it. Yeah, one of the things I remembered about, you know, like I said, I'm not a bible thumper but i remember the stories because for a long time um i learned a lot about life um i often wondered why why the messiah or jesus um in the christian story didn't turn the bread into stone just to feed himself mm -hmm. you know why why he really didn't and then I'm thinking about it. It's like you're never supposed to take a gift that you're given freely and charge someone for that which you were given freely. Mm. That's abusive. You never turn bread into stone, stone into bread to feed yourself. You can feed others with it, but never to feed yourself. And and I've lived by that. Wow. And, as a result, the universe saw kindly enough to allow me to uncover and open up the flower of life itself. The same thing, I mean, what's funny, the same people that are laughing now, if Da Vinci was around, if, if, if Copernicus was around, if Archimedes, if they were all gathered into a room with Newton and with Einstein and all of that, everyone would be quiet right now, mm -hmm. raising their hand, asking questions about the geometry that they desperately were seeking to understand. The link yeah. to, the, to the Pythagoreans, the Pythagoreans believed that the, that the dodecahedron was the most powerful and um, all-telling of all geometries. This is where 12 met 5. And so much so that it's been reported that if one of their members were to mention dodecahedron outside of their private make, their private um, meetings, that person should be killed on the spot. What they were really looking for was a contracted dodecahedron, which is the linchpin, which is the source of all things. It is the fractal. That's why when I made that million dollar. Um, thing on Andy Cohen, I had said I'll give a million dollars to anybody who can build a better um, common factor of the universe than me. <laughs> because it was a fixed price. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a wrap. It's yeah. a wrap. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I sound confident. I'm, I got I got the truth and God on my back. <laughs> Yeah, but that's why that's why I said I was I was joking before I said that was the first time you said I think because you're very very confident yeah. about this and I think that's what makes me interested and even after this if people are watching and they're still confused it's like it's just your confidence and how specific you are when you're speaking I'm like he's got it figured out yeah. and even after this watching more and more interview interviews from you more YouTube videos that you put out it's just wanting to seek the knowledge is what's most important to me at least and it's, you're talking to somebody who's not obviously not a scientist but i'm i'm just fascinated i think that's the best word but i'm not a scientist either i'm just i'm just somebody who's curious about how everything works and i wanted when i was a kid i just wanted to know how did it all work and it all comes down to two things interacting yeah and, uh, this 
it comes, the entire universe gets reduced down to what happens when eight bubbles meet and what happens when six bubbles meet and how those interact with each other. Because each one of these have a pole, a, a vortex, a tornado spinning around it, mm -hmm. unwinding. And each center also has, I don't know, I keep losing my thing. Oh, yep, yeah, right there. That's good. Each center also has its own vortex, whirlpool spinning around and around and collecting. And how they bump into each other like waves crashing, moving in opposite directions. That's how everything in the universe is just some stage of a wave crashing into another wave and mm. resolving. And even though it's taken, in, in a second we see a wave turn white and then it goes back to that, that navy blue. That's mm -hmm. a second. Well, our entire universe has been just the result of two waves crashing into each other and it's all that we see is this foam that's about to disappear but this has been lasting for hundreds of trillions of years i'll say this last thing just because i know somebody's going to take, take offense to what i just said there they say our universe is 13.7 billion years old mm -hmm. well our earth moves away from the sun at six inches a year the earth has been moving away from the sun since the moment that it formed that means every 10,560 years the earth moves one mile away from the sun in order for the earth to be 93 million miles away from the sun that means the earth would have moved 982 billion 80 million years it wouldn't take 982 billion 80 million years in order for the earth to reach 93 million miles away from the sun mm -hmm. well that means that's linearly if you just added six inches a year but wait a minute well how how then did the earth they only say that they say the earth is only 4.6 billion years old well, that means that it would only have moved about 341,000 miles in, since, the, since its creation. Now, the Big Bang happening 13.7 billion years ago means that at the moment of the Big Bang, the Earth was 91 million miles away from the sun already, which doesn't explain Jupiter or Mars at, at, at 143 or 40-something million miles away from the sun it would take 1,549,000,000 years for Mars to get to where it's at. It would take 5 trillion years linearly for Jupiter to be where it's at. And the furthest planet away from us, Neptune, you're talking 29 trillion years at a similar rate to 6 inches a year. And they say that our Earth is on, the universe is 13.7 billion years old. So throw all the science classes away, basically. I'm saying just take a look and add it up yourself. And that's looking at it linearly. you got to remember, it unwinds like a corkscrew that six inches. So it could be m even much larger. This is me just looking at it six inches. So you really could wind up the entire galaxy and wind up all of the galaxies and get to the true age of the universe. That's what this technology allows us to do. So and what is the true age of the universe? Well, from um, your science, the scientific well, um, no, just, discoveries. Just looking, I, I, all I can say is that our Earth is at least 982 billion years old. Our, wow. That is at least, at least 982 billion years old. And we have another 38 billion years before we move out of the Goldilocks zone and are at 98 million miles away from the sun. And it's we're like some really cold and unable to recover from the cold. And each time we go further away, we'll be at a lower pressure condition. And everything will expand like you know, nitrogen coming out of the ocean. You know, when you come up, you have to slow down because the nitrogen wants to expand and they want you to equalize before you come out of the water. Do you know what I'm talking about? A little bit, slightly. <laughs> I'm just trying to bend. follow you. It's called the bends. It's called the bends. 
So likewise, as the earth gets further away from the sun, it mm -hmm. moves into a lower pressure condition. And okay. therefore, the nitrogen expands more. Okay. Ultimately, to a point where it can no longer be held by the vortices that hold our earth together. And so we become like the planet Mars, pushed further away from the sun. And at the same time, Venus is slowly moving into this place. And in 271 billion years, Venus is going to be right here at the Goldilocks zone. And all of this life will happen all over again. Oh, my goodness. That's just how simple it all works. It's just the truth, and I'm sorry if it messes no. up a bunch of books. This is the truth, and this is the geometry behind the truth, and it can be tested. Any person that hears this can go and wind up our solar system. Mm -hmm. Now, can I ask you this? Would you? I know you said you're you're retiring from acting, but everything that you're you know letting me know now, and everything you're teaching, everything in your book, would you consider doing? either a documentary or a movie just because the average person may not still grasp it just from you discussing it just from reading the book is there any type of other document documentary like type of project you would do for this just because i think some people may learn it a little bit differently if it's in film well like 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 the, like the scripture says let him that has ears hear let him that has eyes see okay um I've spent enough time um, communicating in that void. That that is a true mm. void okay. with a lot of agendas. And you know, I'll I'll rather use the sunshine and the space that's provided. And those that need to hear will mm -hmm. hear. Yes. And those that the flower calls, you know, that the father calls. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get, they'll get the message and they'll move on it. That's just what I'm waiting for. I just like participating in in showing that the the way to the tree of life has been open. You know, come mm -hmm. take life's waters free and see where it leads you. Read the book. It's worth. I'm gonna I'm read it all over again, <laughs> but I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it out loud so this guy, my husband. <laughs> He can explain. I mean, follow he's the prompts. You got to follow the prompts in it. That's the the each one leads and explains itself because I know these are seemingly complicated things, but all I'm talking about is one thing spinning to the left and one thing spinning to the right, and it yeah. just been repeatedly. Yeah, I still need to read it again. I'm just be honest. <laughs> need to read it again or like even even your um at the very end like where you you're not showing the platonic solids like throw all of that away you have your own and then you named them i did notice you know you <laughs> named them after your you named them like it's with your wife your wife's name was in there somewhere yeah, i think i yeah. might have saw your son's name in there somewhere yeah my sons my 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 um my first my first two daughters i yeah. mean how do you think well why shouldn't I name them after my children? No, it's I'm here life. for it. Listen, I'm not. I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying I. I acknowledged it. I'm like, okay, wait. He's writing his own. Well, not your own, but you know what I mean. You're naming it on your own. Yeah, well, I dis it discovered me when I was by myself. So, and it, that's how the truth behaves with you. Nature yeah. is a very jealous God, and she only reveals her secrets when you are alone with her and she reveals them in whispers you have to be open you've got to be listening you've got to be looking for it you yeah. know, your heart has to be churned just right but once that truth hits you that bell of purpose like like i say it mentioned in the book that's my joy you know that that little boy that asked the question why does a bubble take the shape of a of a ball why not a square or a triangle that little boy got his answer. And <laughs> when I asked God, how does everything work? The creator was like, yes, this is how it works. And I'm, I'm not only, I'm going to let you share it with everybody else. We'll give you this big platform as an actor. 
And I'm gonna make you a loud mouth on top of it. Oh God! I hope that's what I'm saying. I hope I do it justice. I mean, I I appreciate. And I'm looking at you. I just want to say this, like just the joy, the joy on your face, and and I'm sure you love acting. I mean, because you're phenomenal at it. But the joy on your face right now, that's everything for me, at least. Oh, just as a God. just as a fan. It, it, now you got me tearing up because I'm actually. <laughs> The truth is, when you like, like you can't, everybody knows when you're in love. Everybody knows. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we know it's when it's true love. Because yes. then it bounces from one person to the other one out. It's contagious. It, it's contagious. And that's what the flower of life is. That's what the fruit from the flower of life is. It's contagious. Once you know the truth, once yes. you look behind the curtain, to hell about going back to, to Kansas. I don't need to go back to Kansas anymore. You know, I got me a tin man and a straw man as my buddies. And yeah. I've got a lion next to me. You know, no, we're gonna make good with this. We don't need the we don't need to take the blue pill. There's a lot we can do with the red pill, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you. And, you know, I, I should have shown more of the videos and all of that stuff. Um, um, can, I, can I tell you something a little off topic? Go ahead. So my dad, um, he's a pastor and he went to, he said he went to high school with you. John Adams High School. Yeah, I went to John Adams. Okay, because I did not believe him. I said, Dad, I cannot say this to him. He's going to say I'm a crazy woman. No, because the fact that he mentioned John Adams, because they closed John Adams, like, um, two years after I was there. I was there in seventh grade. Yeah. Seventh grade. And then I went to Jane Adams. Yeah, I was just about to say that. So my dad said you went from John Adams to Jane Adams, which is the School of the Arts. Yeah. And like I even wrote it down, he says that you guys grew up on 93rd Street between 116th yeah. and, and Union area in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> yeah, that's for real. That's yeah, he like real. he gave me a picture and everything. Like I wish that's I would have had it ready. I'll, I guess I can try to email it to you or, yeah. or something. But he has a he has a picture of you like at the lunch table and everything. And I'm like, Dad, that's not him, but I believe true. you. <laughs> 105th Street, that was the main street that went east to west, went um, north to south. You yeah. know, east and west was St. Clair. And yeah. yeah, that was, I'm glad <laughs> you put, put a little smile on my face. Yeah, no, that'll make my dad happy. I'm telling you, I, I, I will. I was, uh, you know, young, so I don't remember so much about Cleveland, but all I remember is getting those Polish boys from one of those spots over there, and he would always take me to get like this huge hot dog and i'm like is that a cleveland thing i yeah, don't know Polish boy yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, you just made my heart warm <laughs> well i'm glad because <laughs> you have a big smile on my face right now so i'm just like i'm happy i'm happy we did this and you know regar you, regardless of yeah. anybody's response I'm, I'm happy to have had you i tell you this um I do not expect anything less than the best from humanity. And sometimes you get your best when humanity's at its worst. And, yeah. you know, they'll speak from their heart. And then once they speak from their heart, they'll consider what their heart has said right. and make adjustments, you know, with their own heart talking to them. Mm -hmm. slowly along the way you know you that's all we can hope for is that we'll encourage each other and ourselves to a better place right but the geometry is the geometry is there it's 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 a blessing to to have those two cherubs out of moving out of the way yeah and welcoming i mean we have to see that it's a welcoming it's like here come 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 this is here. This is. There's so much we can do now. Well, I'm excited to see what you do. I really am. Yeah. And maybe, me. maybe once you reveal it, maybe you can come on back and talk to me again. <laughs> That's the fun day. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'll oh. tell it this way. I'll tell it this way. On that day, we will predict all distribution of matter. All distribution Wait, of matter. Really? How? 
something very simple. We've talked about it already. Don't you, don't you give me a riddle. Okay. I'm going to watch this back and I'm going to figure it out. Yes, you should. Yeah. Oh, I do should be, should have met. My, my husband has a guest. Can we give him a guest quickly? Yeah, go ahead. Come on, babe. Come so, on in here. Come so, on in, babe. All right. Here, so he, here, here he go. I'm like, I'm like, I'm listening to you guys talk, and I'm bursting at the seams over here. I have, like, so many questions. But here's what I think it is. When you showed the model of the DNA in the tower, I noticed one thing. We, we went to the top angle, um, and it looked like there was a square there, but it was like a matter of perspective. It was kind of like, a, like an op optical illusion. And then so when you put the DNA in, and it's kind of like a like a sifter in, inside the tower where the, it, it's rotating around the linchpin, but you have all the that. Come on, babe, you got it. Get you it out. Get it. It. You just said it. That, you just said the word just dropped out of your mouth. Yeah, you just said it. You know? Yeah, yeah. The lynch, the, all the all the matter is like kind of rotating around around the, the, the linchpin, right? And so, and then that's how the matter distributes itself, and then it interacts. <laughs> it, it interacts with each other. Kind of like when the, when the scientists are like baffled, what, what what happens to the particles when it gets on the other side of the double slit experiment? Then when we try to take a peek at like the symbols, oh my gosh! Well, no, I'm with you. I'm <laughs> to, I don't want my phone to die. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm like, you got it. You know? I, I feel like I'm just mumbling now. No, you were smart. You were dead on it from the start. <laughs> you were dead on it, and your wife in her first video. Hold on, let me plug this up real quick. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, that was about to die. That was about. To I'm die. glad you caught it. <laughs> I, I caught it because it, it was. I think it was about to go. <laughs> you said me in my first yeah. video. Yes, then the the video where you um were defending, where you sat up and, and defended me. You said, you know, your husband, who's a really smart guy, said said this guy may be may know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And I I was like, wow. I was like, I so when. When Chris reached out and talked about you, I was like, yeah, I definitely want to participate. I would love to go on and talk. This is the first time I've actually gone and talked about it. Oh, wow. And on any kind of platform. Um, there's certain aspects of it I'm not going to talk about. You know, I understand. That, that could easily <laughs> be read about. Oh, yeah, understandable. Yeah, you know, but this... <clears throat> But what I what my hopes for Haiti is really the hopes for the entire world. Yeah. And ultimately, there's a oh, <laughs> there's so much we, that's a, that's available now. I'm excited. I'm when excited. I said the DNA, we can now control the DNA. So consider that. It. I'm sure your husband has an understanding of what I'm saying. Oh, he's <laughs> over here. He's over here. You you couldn't see him. He's just over here like. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does have one question. I know you said you don't you don't need anybody, and you know you've got it. No, it's well, the only the only reason he's, is because, he's like, what can I do to help? <laughs> because the thing is, is that it's just like when I start when I, I I started reading the book and I started reading your material, and like a lot of the things that you were saying, like I've arrived on the show of those concepts before. If you if you understand what I'm saying, and mm -hmm. it's just like, but it's easy enough to, like I explained. In taking the, the flower of life apart, mm. piece by piece, and putting those pieces together according to relative universal ratios, mm -hmm. those numbers always repeat themselves. So any piece that you want to take from the flower, you can put together. Now, they're, they come in basic shapes and forms, but you see that in, in this. Mm-hmm. And um, I wish I had a pointer, which I don't have anything I can point with. But all of these shapes, you know, me taking this full angle from here, oh my God, to here. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully I'm up there. Basically, speaker is off. Can nobody hear me? No, no I can hear you. you. Yeah. Okay, I just can't hear you guys. Well, it's basically... I can't see myself well, but it's taking that piece mm -hmm. no, no, and I putting saw, that together six times. Mm. Mm. Now I saw I saw what you did with some of those pieces there. Like one thing that just pops okay. into my mind is. Hold on, I'm trying to see why my speaker went off. Gotcha. 
Okay, there you go. Yeah, and I, and I see some like some of the 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 because I mean the, essentially geometric proofs, right? Yeah. The, Right, and and I just think, what if you take were was to take some of those some of those shapes and apply maybe like a a, a graphene lattice to it, you know, a graphene with all of its you know <laughs> extra properties, and then you could. Yeah. <laughs> well, you I mean, I'm already I'm churning well, right now. Well, you you you're actually you're actually speaking in uh, the language we're talking about. Yeah, I told you. I said I, that's why I wasn't joking in my first video. I said, I'm, let's I said just put it, let's just knows. put it this way. Since <laughs> I was a kid, she'll let she'll let it out my giggles, but that just be me giggle, like a kid. Right? <laughs> yeah, I just just from from since I was a kid. I, I, let's just put it there. I've always been looking for correlation, you know, and like things like this. So it's just like it's pretty. That's why I said those who have ears will hear, and they will ask more questions. And as long as there's questions, then I'll have answers. Yeah. If you ever reach a point where there's no more questions, <laughs> then we'll bless each other and go on our in our merry way throughout the universes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's talking to a guy who took a computer apart at six years old and put yeah, it back I, together. Yeah, <laughs> I, took, I took apart my first one. I was like nine because I wanted to see how it worked, and you know, he's that guy. Yeah. I'm interested in physics, quantum physics, like all those. Other, I'm not a scientist, you know, but I just. My thirst for curiosity. Well, we have to realize that the rest of them that has those, all those titles, they're not scientists either. Because a scientist is a critical thinker, which you mm. are. A scientist isn't an intellectual who just wants everybody to know what books he's read or she's read or what projects she's participated in or has sat on the chair of or how. You know, nobody really cares. I want. I don't want to see an equation. Show me the mm. geometry. Mm. Show me the whole. Yeah, mm -hmm. blow my mind. <laughs> blow my mind. Well, you've already That's blown our mind. I always try to do, you know, put two all shapes together and see nature. The, you know, the 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 evil eye, so called, of Egypt. You know, and see what the love from it, what the real space of that. Mm -hmm. it, just how the universe really works together. That yeah, I'm, just... I'm happy. I'm just, I'm really, really happy to just say, you know, come on, y'all, ringing the bell. Come on, let's eat. <laughs> let's eat. Because <laughs> the universe never gives people anything unless it's something they're going to need. Yeah. And if we didn't need this knowledge right now, <laughs> we wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. most of the, most of the things we need, our lives depend on it. So it's please share. Come just just consider what's in the book, yeah. you know, and maybe become a race that the universe wants to preserve. Yeah, and that's how I felt when Chris emailed me and said, you know, Terrence Howard requests to be on. I'm like, is this is coming to me for a reason? So I'll I'll take it. <laughs> hmm. Everything happens for a reason. Amen. Well, have a blessed night, and thank you guys so much. Thank you. Oh, most definitely. And thank tell you. your wife I said thanks. I know that was a long conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is good. You know, and be as kind as you can. <laughs> Don't have me looking crazy. But no, I, no. <laughs> crazy is as crazy does. And right. I've seen some crazy things, but my God, the geometry, they say it's same. I don't see anything crazy about this. Hmm. It's all interesting. I'm just, a fascination is my word for tonight. I'm well, DJ, we can send over, we can send over <laughs> that um, the proposal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or at least the video to, at least some of the video to it so she can sure. be able to talk about it, you know. Yep. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Good night. Thanks, Good night. guys. This is a Candid Candace exclusive. <laughs>